All right, um, here we are. <laughs> I am sitting at my desk. You can see my face. I'm not on my office floor. And it is Friday afternoon and I have just gotten off work for a two week long vacation and I'm super excited. So today I thought I would try something a little bit different and act like an actual booktuber, even though I'm not really that. My channel's kind of whatever I want it to be um, and go through my 2023 best books of the year. Um, I'm starting with fiction ones because I also have some Christian recommendations for you, but my Christian recommendation stack is currently holding my laptop so that I can read what I've scripted out for each of these books. Um, uh, yeah, I have never scripted a video. I have never done anything other than just vomit words. Um, so I thought today I could do something a little bit different and get through this big old stack of books for you guys today. So without further ado, let's just get started. I'm going to try to do this all in one take so I don't have to do a ton of editing. So I'm going to start with my top five favorites. I'm going to work from my least favorite out of the five to my number one. And honestly, all these books are great. I had a hard time ranking them. I don't think there's really like a best well there is a best one but out of these five I would have had a really hard time trying to decide number one so I'm doing the first actually I lied I have one two three four five six I have seven books so I have four of my favorites and then three honorable mentions so I'm gonna go ahead and get started so coming in at number four I realize this is backwards on your screen maybe I can figure out the orientation um this is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn I did not expect this book to make it into my top five of the year when I checked it out from the library, and yet here we are. Um, I have only ever thought that the Bridgerton series is like a good fun time, um, and that's the show, not the books. The books I have problems with. The first book was okay. I really like Antony's book, but then I checked this out because Colin and Penelope's story is coming next on the show, and I read this book in a day. Um, so I read it. Then I quite literally immediately ran back, ran to my nearest Target and bought a copy and I reread it and annotated it the next day. As you can see, the lovely page flags and such. Um, I literally read this book twice in three days. And I know there are a lot of mixed opinions about this book and I get it, but I really, really adored it. Like I love Friends to Lovers when it's done well and I think this is done really, really well. Um, I saw myself in both Colin and Penelope and what more can you really ask for than that books exist in part to allow their readers to connect with the characters and be seen by somebody who's putting words on paper. And I love this book and I'm so excited for season three of Bridgerton. The next one is one that's making its rounds on the internet and book talk currently. And it's If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I think I heard about this book in... Maybe Plant-Based Brides, Dark Academia vlog. I don't remember, but I heard so many good things about this book. And I absolutely adored it. Um, this book is a love letter to Shakespeare, Dark Academia, friendship, love, language, and evil. Um, the cast had amazing chemistry. There was a lot of moral gray, like morally gray motives behind all of them. And all of that brought so much nuance to a difficult and sometimes triggering conversation. There were also implications of what it means to stop seeing fiction as fiction and what happens when actors become their characters. Um, I also loved that this book was dark academia, but not to the point where you don't understand what's happening, which is often the case. There are several dark academia books where I'm there for the vibes. Like Atlas Six is great, love the plot, amazing, but the writing, I get lost. Um, this book, the story doesn't get lost. It's written and lyrical, beautiful writing. And it's just a bunch of normal college kids trying to figure out how to solve a problem that they've made themselves. Um, there just aren't enough words to describe how much I love this book. I love this book so much. I love this book so much. And then another, <sighs> I feel kind of silly because all these are on book talk and I don't even have TikTok. Like, I refuse. I guess I just kind of see them on Instagram or get wrecked them by friends. But, guys, <laughs> I fell victim to the emotional whirlwind that are Liz Tom Ford books this year. I read Mile High. I loved it. I read right, The Right Move. Loved it. And then 
we got Kai. And first of all, how dare you, Liz Tom Ford, with this man. This man is everything to me. Anyway, I loved all three of these books, but none of them did it for me like Kai Rhodes did. Single Dad Falls for the Nanny. Like, that trope is amazing. And the characters are just real people. And I think that's what really draws me to Liz Tom Ford's books so much is that the characters have real conflicts and real pain and they aren't over dramatic, unrealistic suffering that happens in the end. Like their insecurities, their doubts, their fears, they're all very, very real things that people really experience. And Kai and Miller are probably two of the best characters I've read in a really long time when it comes to a romance. Their chemistry and banter and their eternal struggles and their identity struggles are all just perfection. Um, and then the slow burn to the perfect moment at the bar. Like, my goodness, was this book good. I loved it so much. <laughs> so much. Um, and just today was a good day. They could all be good days. My whole heart is in this book. My whole heart is in this book. All right, and then rounding off my top five um, is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I actually met her at Y'all Fest. So this book is currently signed. Um, it was one of the best days ever. This book is another one. I don't think anyone really expected it. I'm sorry, my laptop keeps going off. Um, I don't think this is a book that anyone really expected to take off the way that it did. Um, because I, like it hit TikTok and everybody was dying. It was so good. I bought this before that all happened. Um, like when it was still in stock, I bought it when I was in Atlanta. But this book is probably one of the most profound books I've ever read. Um, I read two pages and I knew that this was going to be the best book that I read this year. And honestly, probably the best book that I've read in the last five years. There's so much to say about this book, and I don't know if I'll be able to do it justice with a 10 second thing, um, but I really honestly don't know how Rebecca Ross did this. The conversations around grief and vulnerability alone had me like in tears, emotional, and like there were several conversations in here where I literally wrote like I boxed off the dialogue and I literally wrote I just had this conversation with my therapist, like literally at least three times in the margins of this book. And there's classism and rivalry paired with misinformation and hiding the truth. And there's perception and honesty. And one of the most beautiful romances and tenderest of loves that I've ever read. And it's historical fantasy and World War One vibes. And honestly, like this book is everything I've ever wanted in a fantasy. It's it's just everything. Like, it's beautiful. It's just everything. Like, I love this book so much. It's probably, like I said, one of the most profound books that I've ever read. Um, and this book also made me feel very seen. And I will never have a love quite like this again for a book. I wish that I could go back and reread this for the first time. Like, that's how much I love this book. All right, and now we are getting to my honorable mentions pile. Um, this is just, they they were great. They were good enough to make it into my top 10, but not into my top five. So I wanted to shout them out anyway. And they're just going in whatever order that I kind of put them in on my desk. Um, so we're going to start again with Rebecca Ross because this woman is a queen. Um, I... Right after I read Divine Rivals, I was like, well, I guess I'm reading everything this woman ever writes. So I bought A River Enchanted off of, I think, Pango Books, which is like a used book app, which is great. Not sponsored, but it's amazing. Um, this book was just as beautiful as Divine Rivals with some of the most like gorgeous lyrical writing I think I've ever read. Um, one of the things that I love about Rebecca Ross is her draw towards writing about hiding information. And like, I know that that's one of the more common tropes in books. Like it's, it's hiding information from characters because there has to be things they don't know for the reveal and for it to all work. But 
the way she does it is so much different and so much better than what I've read before. And I also loved that she had two different romances happening in this book. So there was like a side couple that hadn't been in love when they got married, but they slowly find out that they are. And then the other one is between our other two, our two main characters, Jack and Adara. And to sum up their romance, I just want to include like my favorite quote from this book and something that I think will defend my position that Rebecca Ross is one of the greatest writers of our generation. And it just says, I am but a verse inspired by your chorus and I will follow you until the end. Oh man, this book, let me see. I think there's there's one more that I tabbed towards the top if I can find it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. It was just like she, the way she described music and the seasons. Oh man, it's just, it's just so incredible. She's just such a great writer. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted by trying to find this quote, but oh well. If I find it, I'll post it on like the community tab or whatever it is but it's it, it's just profound like she's just a very 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 talented writer and like I said I will be buying everything she ever writes from now on because it's incredible and then we have to talk about everyone's favorite book this year I am probably not the only one you're gonna see talk about this book as I mean it's the internet um, this book does everything that I needed it to do. It, d for a, I know she's a romance writer, but for a debut fantasy romance writer, it delivers, uh, fantasy romance writer, fantasy romance debut, this book delivers everything that it needs to, to be a good fantasy within the first hundred pages. It's incredibly well paced. The action isn't overwhelming. And when... And it's like what you think of when you read the synopsis. College age idiots who just happen to have dragons. And like the dragons don't even. Like they are warriors, they're partners, they're sassy, they're ridiculous. I love them. I want a Terran for myself and I want an Andarna for myself. Um, this book is executed really well. It's the perfect cross of fantasy romance and the character dynamics are absolutely incredible. I would go to war for Zayden Bjorsen, and that's just a fact. Like, it's just a straight-up fact. I would. Um, the romance and spice level is really perfect, at least for my taste. Like, not that everyone would agree, because I get it. But um, for my taste, it was done really well. And Zayden and Violet's banter is great. Um, especially when they're communicating to each other, like, silently, and everybody's like, what is going on? Are they fighting? <laughs> it's just really funny. Um, but... My hot take is that Iron Flame was better. I know that's dicey, but that was my that was my take. So do with that what you will. And the last book that I read this year, this one's a little bit older. Um, I read Anna the French Kiss <laughs> for the first time ever. Um, I bought this because I wanted the, well one like look at the cover and look at this look at the sprayed edges like are you joking um also when you pre-ordered this uh it came with an Eiffel Tower keychain and I'm all about that so that's why I bought it um but when I got around to actually reading it to see what all the fuss was about because again this is an older book like it's published in like 2015 I want to say Oh, 2010. Dang. Okay. 2010. Um, I just found myself thinking that I wish that they wrote more romance books like this for young adults because in my personal opinion, not to have a hot take, but this is like actual age appropriate content, kind of like um, Better Than the Movies by Liz Painter. Liz Painter? Lynn Painter, sorry. Um, this book is, it's age appropriate content. The characters are more mature than you would think. And I just really loved it a lot. I loved Sinclair or I thought he was, or St. Clair. I thought he was great. I thought the are they, aren't they was really realistic. I thought St. Clair was do, like just a great character. Um, Anna was a great character. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the Ross and Rachel dynamic from Friends, just in the sense that it was the are they, aren't they 
friendship, kind of dating, not really, kind of dating, not really. And then by the end, they're together. And plus this book was set against Par the backdrop of Paris. And I just really liked it a lot. And you guys can do with that what you will. But I thought it was great. And again, this cover is stunning. The sprayed edges, beautiful. Um, so I hope that, oh, I almost dropped my whole stack. I hope that you guys enjoyed my pile of fun times. I have read a hundred and two books this year. And these were the seven that made it into the cut. Um, I am still very much looking forward to Ruthless Vows that's coming out in December. Um, that will pro that I probably should have waited until after that came out to film this, but these were my top eight, seven, one, two, three, four, five, I forget, seven books of 2023. Holy cow, we're in 2023. We're about to be in 2024. Whew, where's the time go? All right, I hope that you are having a good day or night, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.